Hello, hi everyone. Thank you very much for taking time to attend <coughs> my presentation. Um, my name is Irina Zux. Uh, I've been building sites for uh, higher ed and academia for many years. And I'm also co-maintainer of feeds module for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 10. And I have deep interest in data, data migrations, and information structure. We we'll also have a Stanford web camp, which is online, and I invite everyone to come back in a month and check out what's new, present, or hear presentations. Today, today's presentation is about Drupal 7 end of life. Uh, this is a very big event for Drupal community, and it impacts lots of uh, sites. Uh, I would like this session to be more of a Q&A and discussion rather than demo. So I'm gonna do very high level overview. Then I'm gonna attempt to do a working live demo. Uh, then we can look at the new layout system which is one significant advantage that we are getting with the backdrop which is different both from Drupal 10 and Drupal 7 because it combines finally into one universal track, this problem with configuring blocks, uh, themes, and finally separates presentation layer from information architecture layer. And um, then we're gonna have questions and answers and I hope to dedicate second half, at least of the presentation for Q&A, so prepare your questions and I'll start thinking about my answers. Um, so back to Drupal 7 end of life, when do I need to start a migration? And the answer is a long time ago. <laughs> and um, the question is why you're not still on, on Drupal 7? And every site is slightly different from the other side, but there's big combination of two factors that keep people on Drupal 7. Factor number one, my site works great. It does everything that I need. Uh, I like <coughs> feel and look. Uh, you know, my users are trained to use, uh, w to update content, whatever they are doing. Uh, my theme, not just front end theme, but also my uh, editorial flows are configured. You're telling me I need to change <coughs> to get a brand new car because there's a law that requires now smoke check. How much money I'm going to spend? And here's the second factor that impacts migrations. I don't have budget to upgrade to Drupal 10, which is supposed to be most logical path. So there's like, um, what do I do now? I begin planning my update if I want to be successful. I need to think about what what do I do what do I need to do during update process and I group it on themes I need to have some rough estimate on where do I spend my time and when we're saying Drupal migration some people are like oh okay I need to move data that's the migration I need to move pictures that's a migration no that's not the migration everything together a migration includes many more things which are listed and very often come as a surprise to site owner, like, oh, I need to retrain my team, we have different uh, user interface now. Or, oh, I need to clean up my current site because I can't bring everything to my site. Like, people don't think about it. Uh, this is rough distribution. This picture has been in, I don't know how many presentations. We also prepared migration checklist uh, that is available to anyone who wants to use it that outlines uh, steps that are happening during the whole migration project rather than the uh, purely moving data from one uh, place to another. This uh, file is available to everyone on the web uh, and you can um, get the link, so link to the slides in the MidCamp um, session. So everything is connected. That's why we call it web, because it's all connected. <laughs> Um, and as I mentioned, this is a very high level overview for now because I want to spend most of the time talking about the details. 
Um, first step is understand your needs. What are you doing? This presentation is not designed for people who answer no to the first question. If you say, does my Drupal 7 site work for me, and the answer is no, this presentation um, is not as relevant as it could be. Because then you're looking at redesign. You're looking at rebuilding site. You're looking to figure out uh, completely different things that if you're like, okay, I like it, I want it like this, I just need to have some off check. Um, the next check that we usually do is my site has complex structure. Simple sites can be very easily moved to WordPress and that's a good path. And from the very beginning, if you have just a simple blog or a simple magazine site on half of the time since 2010, I would say no, I suggest you go with WordPress because it's designed for that kind of, um, you know, for that kind of site. But when you work with a site that has complex relationship, and in higher ed, it's a very typical site. You have department, department has courses, instructors, uh, schedule. This thing needs to pop out automatically. You have you know, times, you have uh, sessions. That you don't want to copy paste all of that. And WordPress does not have out of the box, well-developed system of views and content types. They, are, they exist there, but they're like out of a second thought. Um, since Drupal 6, uh, CCK and views were, to me, most important tools that were, uh, and the reason why I was using Drupal. It's like almost, we can call it AI, because you tell your site, I want to see all the classes that are taught by that professor, and the system knows how to do it, to, what, 15 years ago. Um, so once you go through these checks, you have workflows, notifications, you have a large um, code base of custom modules because like in our sites, I have a bunch of processes that are coded like, okay, if this, then that, send people here, pre pre present things in a certain way, generate this kind of reports. If you say, okay, I do have all these things, then we, my recommendation is run site audit module, and then this is a very good time when you say, okay, Drupal 10 is the good, best option for me, whether it's 10, 11, or whatever comes next. But sometimes you look at it and you can read long article that says migrations of Drupal 7, cost considerations. And this is where you begin talking about um, budgets as well. Um, site audit module, we released it. it, it was developed by Pantheon very long time ago, it was built in part of Pantheon workflow. Um, at Portland, we had a code sprint and we released it as a module for Drupal 7 that has UI and it, what it does, <laughs> in some extent it does what Drupal does to data. Uh, it combines all the reports that Drupal has already into more readable, more ex more efficient report. And you can see it here. You can, this is an example of reasonably clean site. So in settings here, you can select what exactly you want to see. You, and all this information is kind of available somewhere, like you can guess lit list of views in your uh, list of views. You can get um, code base, you know what models are there. You can get list of users, you can get list of blocks. But you, if you want to get it all together for your site audit, so you can give it in this format uh, directly to your customer or directly to your content editor so they can evaluate it. And here some useful things that are in there. In addition to overview like Oh, here's like all my content types. Yes, you can get this by you know clicking admin views, but here you can see, okay, I only have one hero image. Do I really need to migrate this content type? Am I really using it? Site audit is also a very helpful tool to, to run your site's maintenance, and it's available for Drupal 10 as well, if somebody cares. 
Um, very useful thing, duplicate titles. Sometimes they are duplicate for a good reason, and sometimes it, it just somebody entered three times the same bio, and you need it's help, very helpful to clean it up. And then fields are available in your fields list, but this report shows you how many count of each field you have. And that is very helpful when you're planning migration because I'm just like, oh, um, let me see, I only have one uh, of those. Do I, am I using it and why do I have, um, I don't see where the word's the largest number. So uh, for the paragraph awards, I have that many paragraph awards, like, okay. And by the way, uh, this module is, as you can imagine, open source. If somebody wants to improve it and say, oh, I really want to be able to click on count and uh, see them in the order, please submit a patch. We'll talk to maintainer and he will commit it. And yeah, we, data tables, uh, JavaScript is not included there. There are easy solutions, but if somebody is using it and feels like, oh, this is very helpful, but could be better, here's a power of open source. Um, the next thing that we do when we begin planning migration is we check um, what modules have been migrated, have been ported to whatever system we want to port. If we are porting to Drupal 10, there is uh, upgrade status that works very well and it works both for 10, I think it's already available for 11, I'm not sure. Uh, and then this module is called Backdrop Upgrade Status. You run them in parallel and you can see how many modules you have in one system and how many modules you have in another system. Because from 9 to 10, it's reasonably easy to port modules, but from 7 to 10, on the regular base, like, oh, how do I do that? And we're not even talking uh, custom, custom code. On our projects, we see benefit of using site audit model about 15% because before we like get that report, get this report, you have to involve either site builder or developer into something that now can be downloaded in one click and then you give it to people who are working with a customer to review things. All right, so this is done. Step two, now we know where we're migrating. As I mentioned, this is a backdrop presentation. If you do have uh, questions about migrations to Drupal 9.10, we can also talk about them, but that has been described in detail in many other presentations, and some of them are mine. Now we're doing list of tasks for migrations. So what do I need to do? In new environment, I need to set up where I'm gonna be developing and uh, hosting modules, configure base entities, migrate data, um, theme, let's figure out what we're doing with theme. Do we need completely new theme? Do we need, um, you know, three front-end developers to work on it? Or we can take existing whatever bootstrap-based or tailwind-based theme that is already in place and do just modifications and figure out, you know, what's best then I need to make sure that I do specific my, my configuration with all the um, blocks, views, stuff like this. Test, debug, test, debug, test, test, no more debugging, great, launch. Um, this is general slide that talks about philosophy of best practices, how to build things on schedule and on budget, right? tool for the job, um, which is basically reiteration of how you do any, uh, any process so it is as, so you have as little stress as possible and as much of positive income, uh, outcome as possible. So here I'm going to dive into the t actual tests and I'm going to Half of this presentation is about this new module, which is we released in December of 2023. It was an amazing project um, from, from the perspective of how open source actually works. Uh, 
this year bad camp didn't have a like full blown bad camp in November, and we said, okay, all right, we'll do just a, a sprint. And I'm like, this is extremely useful tool. Can we make it actually work? Because there was a placeholder that somebody, that a developer, great developer, put in a long time ago. He's very much in UI part. Um, it's like, oh, this is what we need. Can we make it work? And we started in November 18. And before Christmas, the model was released. And there wasn't that many, um, there was a couple of, uh, Zoom meetings where people got together and talked like, what is a good process? What is a bad process? What's helpful? What is not? Model is still in beta and it's doing uh, exactly what Michael has mentioned, um, I think a year and a half ago. He said, well, if you want, if you have a site that can simply migrate to backdrop, what I want to see is I plug in, uh, you know, database credentials or backup, click the button, it moves modules, it moves database, and then you can configure the rest. Um, Michael has his next door doing amazing presentation with his students, but um, his vision is now implemented. The, the module is built on top of backup and migrate, and this module has been since Drupal 5 or 6. Uh, lots of people use it. Uh, it has the same architecture. So it, it's UI who guides you through all these steps. And we have, and our experience is it saves you about 30% of the part that lies between data import and logic and rules. Because it migrates all the views, it migrates, um, let me see if it were, I have a list somewhere. Uh, out of the box migrates all users with their passwords because it's not a migration, it's an upgrade. You take the database and your existing database is now converted into uh, soft secure. The, the, uh, the key thing is that we need to have software that has certificate it's of uh, support, right? Security releases is what driving Drupal 7 end of life. Community cannot support, um, sorry, uh, you need to have this uh, security certificate. There's not enough bandwidth in Drupal community to support both Drupal 10 security releases and Drupal 7 security releases. Drupal 7 is, was great system. But you can't get it when you put it out, out of the box. It has requires a lot of work. And it doesn't have lots of great features. So we need something else that will be sustainable for site builders. So backdrop is Drupal 7 that was grew out for site builders. It, it was a very interesting conversation with, I think it was conversation with chromatic folks a year ago, and they're like, well, developers like Drupal 7, but it wasn't sufficient enough, so they built Drupal 8, and site builders you know, should be free to build what they want, and they built, and it's called Backdrop CMS. It combines all the great things. It has configuration management, uh, which makes DevOps cycle much easier. It has CK editor and core. It has um, clearly views and you know all the bunch of advanced things in core it has admin toolbar in core i still have to install admin toolbar every single time i install drupal 10 i still have to install admin toolbar and i can't do anything without it with backdrop i get it out of the box i get um tokens out of the box and bunch of things that for me as this when i'm doing site building they are critical um so it's kind of what Drupal, what is the logical extension of Drupal 7. So when we're doing this migration, we're taking Drupal 7 database the way it is, we upgrade it, so now it runs in um, backdrop CMS, and so content is preserved, structure is preserved, user are preserved, blocks, most of them are preserved until, unless they are built with super custom designs, because you can build blocks in so many ways. Uh, uh, path aliases are preserved. 
which is great because I don't need to deal with redirects. And this is why, if we're going to go back to this diagram, this is why this number is so large. And for people who need to migrate and have limited budget, this is a very significant um, part of can, how can we get off Drupal 7. So let's try to follow the steps that we outlined. So say, okay, let's select hosting. Um, you can host, uh, but I'm going to do demo on local. A Pantheon provides out of the box hosting with all the standard Pantheon DevOps. Uh, in high red, we need to be hosting on an approved vendor, so we can just host wherever we want. So having a backdrop on Pantheon for us is uh, very important. Um, you can set up new site in various ways. There's, uh, for those who want to install it using Lambda, there is a Lambda um, plugin, and I was very excited um, to see that developers are working on making sure that all the tools for Backdrop are there. Um, I usually would just simply download Backdrop using download button from Backdrop CMS front page. Um, recently we've seen that you can also easily install it using cPanel tools. Softaculous already has it, and Stellatron is uh, installing it in April. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it depending on what uh, what your, where your customer wants to see their final site. Uh, next step, we're gonna <coughs> supposed to install contrib modules. I'm gonna use DB, D2B module for that. And then uh, themes, and then we're not gonna clearly address custom modules right now, but um, we're gonna touch uh, the top of the iceberg on how it's done. Um, you can install project browser, project installer, whatever you call it, has been, has been in uh, backdrop since day one. And we're very excited that it's going to be on Drupal 11, hopefully, as well. I participated in project browser, I think, two years ago. Uh, it's good to see it all coming together. And you can use Drush. There is also a new tool called B. Uh, some people are building composer based installations, so it's not like you are limited to something, it's uh, open source. We put together the demo. Uh, you can click on this link uh, and um, watch YouTube recording, uh, which shows first how you install modules and how you can run, upgrade, and configure the tools. and. Today, we're going to attempt to do the live demo. Can we have drums? Um, here we go. So I think that the one of interesting things about live demo is that you can always find something new and exciting that uh, worked perfectly well last time. Um, one thing that I've, I, I don't think I included in the slide for the presentation, but I will after that. Uh, on Wednesdays at 11 Pacific, noon, oh. mid-time, there's a user group meeting. Is it office hours? Sorry. Office hours. There are office hours. Um, we have here at least two people who participate in office hours on the regular basis. Let me give them a round of applause. And if you want to try a D2B module yourself, but you're like, oh, I, I, I'm not sure. Please come to office hours, and you will be guided through this interesting process and exciting process, and we will have a chance to see what's broken on your personal site. <laughs> then we will gonna put it into an issue, and then somebody will come in and fix it. Because tomorrow we have a plan to go and fix all the things that we've recorded last week. Okay, so this is my, this is a testing small site. Uh, just to make sure that we don't run this for a long time. Um, Irina, yes. can I just clarify, I'm not sure if everybody quite got that. The Backdrop community has open office hours every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central. 
It's, okay. it's changed. Uh, we use a UTC time, so it, it did shift for those of us in the U.S. recently. But anyways, it's open office hours. There's uh, Justin, myself, other people are usually there. And you can just drop in and we answer questions. And over the last couple of weeks, we've helped one site owner walk all the way through this upgrade process. So it's a, a free opportunity to get folks live, you know, immediate answers to your questions. Okay. For recording, because I'm not sure if it had been heard, uh, office hours Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central time. Central time. And on the website, backdropcms.org, you can find the link to office hours and make sure and usually it will display office hours in your own time yeah. okay so this is a little bit preset uh, this is so this is my source site and we're going to try to run migrations for this source site so what i'm going to do is i'm going to enter this is, screen is very similar to drupal 10 uh, one click upgrade which i was so excited about in 2016. Um, you enter your database credentials and then you click connect. If your site is not connected and I might have one that is not connected yet, uh, this you will see the message that says um, your site is not connected. Um, so you're in an empty backdrop site right now, basically. Yes, this is this is out of the box new installed uh, backdrop site. This is what it looks like when you install it first time. Okay. The only thing I did to uh, minimize number of problems that I'm gonna see today was I went here to install new modules. Uh, these are the modules uh, list. If I want to find a module like um, feeds, I don't know. I already have feeds installed most likely, but it will tell me very clearly. This is already downloaded. Uh, you can I can add these things to installation queue if I want, or um, uh, I can uninstall modules here. Um, and then here, once they're installed, I can enable them or keep them disabled. So, yes. Before you get to that, though, when you install the, the blank backdrop site, you have to go to the list of modules and turn on project installer so you can install it. Because it doesn't come out of the box turned on. Okay. Um, for the purposes for the purposes of recording, yeah. I want to emphasize that backdrop out of the box comes with the screen that allows you to install new modules. The important thing we will see after we run the migration, this uh, screen is usually disabled because in Drupal 7 you don't have a project installer. So after you run an update, you definitely need to go and re-enable re this module and this is a great exercise that we will try to do in the live demo. Thank you, that was a very great, very good comment. I knew it was somewhere. Yes. So our next step will be, if we follow the script, and there's this interesting idea which I try to, uh, I'm trying to bring this idea everywhere. Create your checklist and then go through your checklist. Don't try to reinvent, your, reinvent the process every time you run a migration. Go through the checklist. Step one, uh, install backdrop. Step two, get module D2B. Because I'm, I'm doing the demo today, I'm not installing it, but I'm like, okay, it's already enabled, great. Step three, go to either system backdrop and migrate and click at the start. If you're doing it first time, it will say uh, connect to your database. If you're doing it second time, we have this information uh, saying, this is where you're connected. This is what you're getting. Because you have an option to, to, to pull in things and completely replace your database. And you want to know what, where you're getting it from. Because when we didn't have this, it was like, oh, 
I think I pulled dev site. Oh no, I got it from live site. What's going on? Something is not working. So <clears throat> uh, have a record of what you're doing. You can also upload a backup file if you want to, but uh, for the purposes of today, we already set up our source database. Uh, the next step is we go and do database analysis. This is the part that goes and checks which modules you have or you haven't. When you're doing it first time, you don't have any listing, it's blank, there's just two buttons. Because this is a demo version, I would run this analysis, but if I need to add more modules or something has not been ported or something is missing, it will show up in the list. And uh, sometimes I run it two or three times to make sure that I got everything and I got everything right. If you have uh, 279 modules and you're trying to ins download them all because that's your next step, I'm like, okay, here I had 100 projects. These are already downloaded. Great. I can see that this one was disabled at source. Okay, I guess I don't need it. Um, if I ever need it, I can install it uh, directly from the UI, uh, from this screen. I can always install it. Um, if it's already downloaded, even if it was disabled at source, you don't need it. Uh, lots of important modules that Drupal 7 didn't have in core are in core now, like date, email, link, redirect. Uh, and then here's a bunch of things that uh, are available for download, but I didn't, I disabled them in my source, so I don't probably don't need it. Um, this is in core backdrop upgrade status. This tells you that the model exists in GitHub backdrop contrib repository, but it doesn't have a release. So the difference between this module, like web form, and module um, backdrop upgrade status means it, the cre uh, release was not created. So you will have to download it directly to your file system and install it like in the old days when you were installing models, uh, not through UI. Then lots of like diff is in core, lots of things that uh, I had to download, like diff is still not in Drupal 10 core. Um, and then here's a list of things that used to be there uh, and they're not yet ported. Maybe I don't need them. So the next thing what I do is, okay, let me download all the projects that are not downloaded. And then I'm like, actually, I don't need, uh, I don't need, I don't, don't need capture, of course, I don't need this, this, this. I'm going to leave Entity Connect just in case FAQs we're not doing. I don't have any of this. So I have this option now to either select all or deselect all. Or I say, okay, I need flag module, just one module. Download available projects. So you can download either everything or just one thing. And um, Sometimes it will enable it, sometimes it won't, but it doesn't really matter at this time when we're doing migration, because we're, when we're bringing da Drupal 7 database in, we don't, it will tell what's uh, need to be enabled or disabled. We're bringing in system table and says this module needs to be enabled or disabled. Uh, it's much easier to deal with file directly and just drop the zip archive into the files directory. This is the most important step. This is serve just delay. So what happens now when I click this button, I click upgrade Drupal 7 database. So effectively, this is usually where things will break. It can give a couple of different messages. We'll see which one that it will give it this time. So what it does, it tells backup and migrate, go into, and I'm going to open and show what happens behind the scenes. Um, it says back up and migrate, restore from, uh, restored from this uh, database, which we downloaded when we said, when we connected to the host through the window, it downloaded the entire database, stored in the backup directory, and now we're trying to bring it in. 
and if things work correctly let's see whether they will or not it took database and now the site does not have original backdrop database now you have the Drupal 7 database it's already in place this is what's in there and then the next thing I need to do is I need to click here and click continue and this is the process of upgrading to backdrop and once this process has been completed uh, I can step down and ta -da, da da you have the new site. The size of the site only matters when you have either lots and lots of modules or when you have huge databases because it just servers break. They break, they just don't process. But basically, we're done. Thank you very much. We can all go home. <laughs> right. Um, uh, here we go. Does this look exactly the way it should? I am not so sure. Let me see. First of all, where is my? I can't. I can't add themes. I can't modules. I don't know what to do. This is where I reference this wonderful note. Thank you very much. And I go and say project installer. Uh, this this module uh, is um, bread and butter for site builders because if you don't have uh, it right here then you still have to download uh, put move you have to have SFTP this is just like boom it's right there so now I can also see what's going on with themes what I see here with themes is I have this so uh, at Stanford, we developed two years ago um, backdrop theme based on Stanford theme decanter. I have feel and look. And then the next thing, let me double check my list. I'm supposed to do, okay, this is already migrated. All these things that we normally uh, do all the testing, run all the configurations, oh, we forgot that field, or this has to be changed. It's done. I don't need to think about it. Now I'm here, set step four. Uh, set your theme and place blocks. This is very, very interesting uh, thing that has been introduced in Backdrop, and I, it took a little bit of time to, for me to learn it well, but it is very powerful. What it does, it shows you all your blocks. So uh, the, the layout system is a best of both worlds. It has a theme separated from layout. And that was always a little bit challenging in Drupal 7, especially when you say, oh, okay, I want to switch theme and all your blocks fall apart. There was a number of modules that were dealing with it. We had panels, we had contacts and all this, but we had, again, we had lots of different things and different people will install things differently and will configure it differently. Layout system, which is sitting under structure and comes with several layouts, uh, is the core of how uh, front-end like blocks layouts are configured. Um, these are called layout templates, and you can see familiar pictures of what the template looks like. And in your layouts, uh, let me see what's going on here. In the layouts, you can see out of the box, you get separate layout for the home page. Uh, separate layout for admin dashboard with a slightly different, lay different layout and also um, different um, and you can do layout overrides and you also can do um, your own layouts. Uh, there was a wonderful presentation I believe yesterday so we can all now watch the video because today is just an introduction and high level layouts are new they require a little bit of learning um, when you're trying to customize things 
But this learning pays back big time. Because now I can say, okay, let me see. So these are all my blocks that I have in the system. I remember we used to have block uh, blocks under structure that was my like, oh, where, how do I see a list of blocks? One of the interesting challenges with list of blocks because they were tied to theme is like, I was switching blocks, theme, regions, all these things were kind of linked together. Here I have separately list of blocks where I know what is where and I know where it's coming from. And then in layouts, and by the way, I can access layouts from every page. And on every page, I can see whether I'm using default layout or I am using different layout. So this is, I'm using different layout and things are configured out of the box. So as a site builder, I have one less click, two less clicks. Uh, and I can see that on my layout that is dealing with research agendas, I have these blocks. Let's say I want to add something, probably not on the life site. Um, so here, let's look at this default layout. One thing I can do in the header block, I can change user menu to main menu. And if my theme is built correctly, um, it should work. So now I have my theme where I want it. I don't want this thing. <laughs> I can say, okay, configure block, which will take me exactly where I want it. Uh, and okay, I see this is configure block main menu. I can either remove it completely if I'm very confident or just disable. And this disabling saved uh, me lots of time every time when I said, oh, I don't need it. Oh, oops, it's the wrong thing. I, I wasn't paying attention. Um, I definitely don't need this block. It was previous theme. And on, I'm gonna say remove. Uh, I want to move demo block here for a change. And also, um, now I have this white space, like why, why do I have this white space? This is like big philosophical discussion between people who feel differently about how layout should be done. I think the great things about open source that you can have enough flexibility so you can do things your way without interfering with other people's way. The one thing here is, okay, I can configure layout, default layout. Uh, we developed something that is called, I don't see what I need. Hey, I, I remember last time you told me that I need to click somewhere. Where do I click? Where do I click? Oh, okay. I see. I need to go to layouts. And then here in layouts, I can install new layout templates. And this is one important uh, thing that uh, where we want to have a very clear uh, understanding, like there's a layout template and actual layout. And the relationship is similar to, okay, this is content type, this is the node. Uh, because terminology is not like, you can never have absolutely clear terminology, something that people need to at some point, okay, this is template, this is actual layout. Um, I want this hair is flexible. I was very happy that we were able to contribute it to open source. Here we go, I want, uh, these are my outstanding models, do I need them? No, not right now. I'm gonna go here and I'm going to change admin not not this page default layout i'm gonna change layout to this one because i believe that if my left sidebar is empty i don't want the white space i want it like this um and i think it would be good at this point for me to complete the demo i think i covered most of the things that i wanted to show um, I want to mention uh, great development tools. Uh, it's called Coder Upgrade. This is a very important tool for developers who are attempting to uh, upgrade custom modules. Uh, 
if you have a custom module and you need to upgrade it to backdrop, try this tool. It will, it's basically AI. It will replace all the, you know, special where it was Drupal something to backdrop something. And then if you still, something is not running on your PH, from your PHP 7.1 module on 8.1, uh, maybe it's time to really upgrade because all the underlying things are also upgrading. We don't have CK3 anymore. We don't have PHP 7 anymore. So this is time to to look into what's the what's your technical debt, where you are ready to move on, and where you still need to uh, work with uh, older structures. A uh, couple of notes about known issues with D2B. Uh, they're being addressed one at a time, and eventually <clears throat> they will be fixed. If you want to contribute just as a user and say, this is how I would like this to work. This is the problem that we all are seeing, but we don't have a good solution for that. You don't have to be a coder. You can say, this works for me. Can you guys code it? That's how I usually do. A uh, little bit about... Those who didn't work with configuration management, it's important learning <coughs> curve. Uh, one additional thing for backdrop comparing to Drupal 7 is um, we now do backup of files, configuration, database, code, and configuration. So if you're moving things between two instances, uh, you need to pay attention to, config to, to all the configuration. Uh, and now, here we are. Yeah, I really need to say a couple of things quick. First of all, if it's not clear to anybody, the, the, the general process that Irina described has worked for a long time, but what we didn't have was this E2B module, which just made it easier. And Irina has been really working hard over the last year and a year to get that E2B module, just making this process easier. So the process was fundamentally the same, but you had to do a few more things manually that now you can do automatically. The, I also just, your, your last point about coder upgrader, you know, Irina showed that there were a bunch of modules that hadn't been ported from Drupal yet. One of the things, the big benefits of backdrop over modern Drupal is that porting modules is much simpler, right? When basically going from Drupal 7 to modern Drupal, whether you're using contrib modules or custom modules, you have to completely rewrite them for modern Drupal. With backdrop, there are sometimes just some functions that have to be changed there's sometimes very minimal work. So you might find a, a, a contrib module that you're dependent on for Drupal 7, and it might be you need to import it in 20 minutes, especially with this coder upgrader. It will like go through and look for the obvious function changes, automatically make them, and modules are getting ported from Drupal 7 to background every week. We have over a 1,000 uh, projects, most of which were Drupal 7 projects that were ported to background. And, and little modules get ported you know, quickly and easily on an ongoing basis if people need them. There are bigger modules, like say the Commerce module, which is not an easy one. Uh, the Commerce module hasn't been ported. I mean, my team's in the process of porting the Domain Access module, which is another big one. You know, Some big ones like Ubercart and others have been around already ported a long time, but anyways. Yeah. Um, it's, All right, we're gonna it, go with this. Just it like, sounds like this is uh, when you do the when you do the database poll, it's a one shot. It's not like the kind of thing where you can run updates after it, you know. So sometimes with a migration, it lasts several weeks, and you, with like if you're doing a Drupal migrate, then you can do updates where basically if the database has changed, it'll just pull in the difference. It, would you have to rerun the whole thing with this? Uh, How would that work? Yes, you can run the whole thing, but it is a very simple run, and you can do, you actually run this screen at any time. Uh, if you so he, he, here's what happens: if you have uh, okay, this is already migrated. Uh, that's a good question. I will try to write it up a little bit in more detail, but every time you pull the database, it's because the process is so simple, uh, you just run the update. 
Yeah. I so guess. It'll dump, it'll dump what you had before and then redo it basically. Mm -hmm. If I come back in a week after I go, oh, there were some issues with this and that, and I got to straighten this out, and now I'm ready to do it again, it's going to empty the database and then basically bring it in fresh. So there's, there's not duplicated. Yes. There, yeah. Yes. If you've imported the database and started configuring your site, save your configuration. Yes. Export okay. the configuration. Because then when you re-import the database, you just import the configuration that you altered, and then you've got new content and your gotcha. altered, like all your blocks are saved. I'd like to say, I don't know if Irene disagrees with me on this, but the word migrate, I plan to be very confusing here, because this is actually the D2B upgrade process. It's just upgrading the database. So it's not like a, the, using the migrate module where you can sort of iterate as you're describing. This is a one-time thing that happens to the database. And which is a little bit technically is different than a migration. And so you do you, you do have to just rerun the whole process. But you can't iterate it, like do it once, find the problems, and then sort of the next time you do it, you prepare for those problems. Well it is a migration in the sense that you're not being able to mic upgrade Drupal 7 site directly. You've got a separate code base with backdrop and you're pulling the database in. This this no, is but you're upgrading the database. For me, a migration is we're not taking the database to the new site, we're taking the data. We're pulling it out of the old database and bringing it into the new site. I consider that a migration. We're actually taking the old database and we're changing the database to make it newer. And that I consider to be an upgrade. Right. It's still a very, very good question because it applies to your workflow like you pull things in something is not working uh, you don't have a theme or something you need and I think the biggest work will be in the layouts and configuration in the layout or if you have like rules or users or roles or something like this so what happens is you should save your new configuration in code I need to pull out Jen's article uh, that explains step by step how to save configuration in code. It's exactly, it's very similar to how you do configuration management in Drupal 10. 10. Exactly the same thing. It doesn't exist in WordPress. I hate it. I have to go over there. I'm like, uh, yeah. Yes. There's no security here. What yes. If someone changes something, I don't even know. Yes, and this is why backdrop is. To, for me, such a great system because it addressed all the pain points that I had with Drupal 7. Uh, one of which was configuration management. Because there was no, you features. had to, <clears throat> features didn't work very well. So configuration management was is much better thought through uh, configuration uh, sure. features. All right. Now, the, the challenge with that is for site builders, it's a little bit like, oh, how do I need to get code here? I need to save it here. I take it from active to staging. So you can, um, so if you, on the new backdrop site, you put, you, you, you change configuration, you move your stuff from staging to active or active to staging. I don't remember exactly because I usually don't do that. We have here people who will be happy to tweak with your configuration on the fly on the live site. Um, but you can, the, the answer to your question that Jim was saying, yes, you can save your configuration. And when you bring in your database next time, your configuration that you fixed will be already in place. So if you made some fixes on your source database, it will brought up cleaner, but if you did made some uh, config changes, they will you can preserve them programmatically. And commit them in Git or whatever system you're using and have the commit says, these are changes that I committed here, so you know exactly what you've done. And this is the module that we found recently, um, and I want to thank uh, Ronan for finding this module that allows you to save your configuration in Drupal 10 which for me as a site builder is amazing. And now uh, my hope would be that Backdrop community will port it to Backdrop. <laughs> and that will be the final you know, cherry on top. Because then we need developers to actually code new features and actually code new modules. And we don't need developers to change labels because the uh, because
customer and content people say, oh, you know, we want to give it a different name. We don't want to, you know, to call it whatever. We want to change name of taxonomy. And then you have developer to do all this stuff, which makes projects very expensive. And if it can, can be done at the content editor, oops, Sorry. at the content editor level, that will be much better. So, the purpose of uh, dating or creating Drupal 7, which is the next version of uh, Drupal, is uh, like security, security uh, new features, and PHP, new newest versions of features, right? Uh, yes. Drupal community is about 1 million something contributors. Uh, Backdrop CMS, and what it heard. <coughs> Let, no, 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 no. Look, hold on. Let's. Th this is this is very interesting. I'm going to find this article uh, from Drupal Watchdog from 20 Drupal Watchdog because I was just showing this recently in an interview. So this is a reasonably old article, but it's a very interesting article that people rarely quote because we're saying, oh, there is. How many did you say Drupal contributors? Uh, more than one million. I seriously doubt that there's a million of Drupal contributors. I think that there is over a million of Drupal users. And I've been in Drupal community for a reasonably long time. And people who actually contribute, uh, I think that they belong into this uh, 2%. I. So. There were over a million groups. It says, like, at least I can read uh, particularly on the page, but uh, the BART, Google BART, he gets that information from about uh, us on Google. More than one million passionate developers, designers, trainers, strategists, coordinators, editors, and sponsors work together. I that that I totally agree, and this this is very consistent with the, with the picture because we're saying there's lots of strategists, there's lots of users, there's lots of people who use Drupal, and this is great system. Uh, one thing that uh, I want to reiterate: you had three very good questions. One was security, second was new features, and third was um, PHP uh, support. Yeah. All these three things are addressed similarly in Drupal 9, 10, 11. And I work with both Drupal uh, with Composer, and I work also with Backdrop CMS. Backdrop CMS is cousin of Drupal 9, 10, 11. Um, they both have one single kind of source. They were, were forked from Drupal 7. They are addressed for slightly different audiences. At the end of the day, the audiences merge together and come back to those strategists, users, um, and people who are contributors in the way that they use this software, right? Um, and these two systems are very close. The backdrop CMS serves people who don't have sufficient budget to use Drupal 10. One of the big limitations of Drupal 9.10, it's, it's expensive. And more or less, I'd say that backdrop CMS provides affordable housing to those who can't move to Drupal 9. And uh, so in other words, it's a solution which can prolong your site living for maybe the next five or for some reasons 10 years. But uh, in terms of community, at least what I see um, the statistic on um, uh, Wiki and what I heard yesterday is a is the number of people who attend to uh, the group CMS community, like uh, nowadays, for the last four years, for the last four years, decreased like, in a half. At least what I see about this. How many years? 
four years. From four years? Till 2024. Yeah. And uh, if this um, situation will continue, it's very likely that the drop CMS will lose uh, the community entirely. So uh, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, if, if this process will continue, uh, the owners of uh, of the sites who use the group CMS will face with uh, just the same issue. Their, their website will stop getting their base. So, in other words, it's it's like at least what I, how I can see it right now. It's a solution, a nice solution, which can prolong uh, like life of all the web Drupal site, uh, but it's. Um, Temporary it's a very good question whether are. yeah we all are I yeah. Yeah. and even our planet is just temporary so for, for for recording I just so people can it's, it's a very good question the question is like um, both Drupal 910 and backdrop address three main points security um, PHP upgrades and um, new features um, and the question is, what is the life cycle of Backdrop CMS comparing to life uh, cycle of Drupal? It's very, it's not really apples and origins because when I need to migrate uh, Drupal 9 to Drupal 10, I'm again, I'm migrating. Um, migrating, I'm getting a little smoother, but not that much smoother. Um, for how long you can have the site on backdrop CMS. Uh, is it five years? Is it 10 years? It's not exactly clear to predict. Uh, both backdrop and Drupal were released, uh, uh, Drupal 8, were released approximately at the same time. And as of now, we have one third of all Drupal sites in Drupal 7. And it's 10 years after Drupal 9 was released. So there is clearly something that blocks these people from moving. And usually it's a price tag. Um, how often do we redesign the site? Approximately every three to five years. If I have a site for three to five years, usually in five years people are like, oh, there's new theme, there's, you know, we're moving off bootstrap, we want uh, tailwind, there's, there's always technology changes. So at this moment, if I can give my sites another five years for 25% of the cost, it's a very big factor, even for people who do have money. There's a very good article about it on Atom's site about um, migration of uh, Stanford Solar. I can put in here, um, house one stand, house Stanford saved uh, half a million this article, this one. So this is very, uh, the article that talks in detail why, um, why uh, Stanford that does have budget has chosen to migrate to backdrop instead of migrating to Drupal 10. And I really like this quote. So that is um, something that also drives um, how you allocate, allocate money in higher ed and non-profit. So. How many poor developers doesn't get the <laughs> <laughs> Joking. How many installs are there? Do we know? Does Where? For backdrop? Yeah. yeah, there's count on, I think it's, uh, it's the number is not that large. It's uh, under 10K, but it's growing. I know that I have oh, like lots of sites that were waiting until, okay, that's the end of the story. We're not gonna have security certificate on uh, January 5, 2025. They're like, okay, can you migrate? Can you migrate? Can you migrate? So I have like, right now I have five sites that are waiting for URL to switch from Drupal 7 site to Backdrop. Okay. And I have another 10 sites that are waiting for me to find time so I can move them. So it's a, um, Yes. Um, so I was considering backdrop for a project, and um, you might have 
much in commerce has not migrated, but I wanted to ask about the big modules. Um, sure. Maybe two questions. One, if something like Ubercart is already migrated from seven to backdrop, but you see that the seven version has updates since then, and the Ubercart in backdrop has not been updated for a long time, what's what sh you know? Is there a standard approach? You upgrade it again and overwrite it. Is there a chance they fork to Ubercart in backdrop? I guess there's a no, chance. No, I mean, Ubercart. Uber an interesting situation because it's had a lot of work separately in, in backdrop from the Drupal seven version. Okay. Um, but I believe there is an upgrade process, and that you, you know it, it should work. Yeah. For, for that, I, I can't promise you that in an no, individual yes. case, but there are upgrade paths with a lot of modules, and, and one like Ubercart would kind of require an upgrade path. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's not that useful if you have to manually move your data. So I, I, you know, I think that should work. The other thing is it's under active development. So if you're trying to do an upgrade with Ubercart, you're running into a problem. We have developers that will probably help you fix that very quickly. I mean, it, it, it's a it's a very actively maintained. Uh, yeah. All of the all of the add-on modules that come with it, like those get ported seemingly all the time, and new ones appear. Um, yeah. Now what about a Drupal seven site that uses commerce? You yes. Yeah. I mean, there, there, actually, I, I, there's rumors of a beta, a pretty major site right now that uses commerce in Drupal seven that is talking about investing in in, in a port of the, the entire commerce. Well, I, I won't say the entire ecosystem, right? There's so many. Right. Of the main of, of the heart of it. I can't guarantee anything there, but it, it, it looks, you know, we haven't had anybody who, that was willing to invest, because that's a big port. That's a big start. Okay. Um, but we, we have had people that have just, that, uh, that are really happy with the work hard. Now, you, it's not, you can't do a direct upgrade. That's the downside. So the, the, the louder clock is ticking, the more people are like, okay, we actually have to do it. Mm -hmm. And right. this is where you start counting money. And it was actually a very good question, like, what do I buy? Uh, like, it's over a lifetime? Or how much money do I save and how much money do I spend? What do I do in five years? Well, if in five years, Drupal, whatever is version at that time, uh, wants to remerge back and bring back all the features that we have now in Backdrop, and it works for me as a site builder. Migration from backdrop back to Drupal is as easy as from Drupal 7 to uh, Drupal 9.10. It's exactly the same thing. And that's something that I probably should, again, add to slides. Mm -hmm. And it's the big message that has been discussed many times with Drupal Association. And um, like, what's the, what's the merge process? As soon as things are in place, as soon as people can begin using Drupal uh, with Composer uh, for the site builder, then no problem. Great, move on. Keep, keep the community merged. But right now, there's a huge discrepancy between what site builders can do and where you need developers. Uh, but to answer the question, yes, you can, you can migrate here, you can buy yourself five years, and then you can move back or move forward. Or move around, whatever it is. Thank you very much.